Let's straighten my hair for the first time in four years. I hardly ever use heat on my hair. It's a really rare occasion when I do, but I really wanted to see what this hair color looked like straight, especially the raccoon tails. I'm dying to see what they look like. So I decided to straighten my hair and I blow dried my hair using the Rev Air reverse blow dryer and I have a video reviewing that up that I posted yesterday. But this is what my hair is looking like to start with. And even though I used a heat protectant on my hair when I blow dried it, I'm going to spray this all over the rest of my hair right before putting the flat iron on because honestly, I don't know the protocol of how long this lasts on your hair because I blow dried it yesterday. But the first Google search I found said to do a light mist after blow drying before straightening. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna roughly section off the top and then clip it out of the way. And I'm just trying to make sure I protect my hair as much as possible, so I'm just gonna get this nice and damp. I feel like this is kind of ruining the blow dry right now, like it's reverting my hair back to curly because it's getting wet. But I'm gonna do it anyways because I just don't want any heat damage. Yeah, this is definitely getting curly again. I used a little bit less on this side, so I think I just used too much over here. I'm also using the Color Wow Dream Coat, and I've seen this everywhere on Curly Girlies, and I really hope it works for me. It's a shampoo, condition, towel, dry, divide into section, spray each section, liberally comb through, blow dry each section using tension, dryer heat required to activate this product. So I'm hoping that the straightener heat will activate the product. Let me know if you guys know in the comments, but if the dryer can do it, I'm pretty sure the straightener can. So while I'm spraying the bottom sections, I'm just gonna add a few sprays of this as well. Then I'm gonna use my Pro's hairbrush and just gently brush that through and try to make sure that the sprays got everywhere. I'm also just using my hands to kind of spread out both of the sprays evenly. Take down the top, heat protectant, dream coat, brushing. And now I'm gonna take the back sections out again and tie up the top so I can start from the bottom up. I think it's just easier to work that way and then your top sections lay flatter in the end. My hair is like already curling and like not blow dried looking anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna just touch up this blow dry. One thing I really wanted to avoid was putting the flat iron on wet hair because it would start sizzling and steaming. So I wanted to make sure that I don't do that. I'm gonna start with this bottom section cause I'm working my way from the bottom to the top. And this is always like my test section. It's my test strand for hair dye. I guess it might as well be my test section for the first pass. And I'm using the Lioness two inch red tourmaline that I've just had for like a long time. And it has a heat control on the side. The bottom is 180 degrees and it goes up to 480. So I'm gonna go somewhere maybe like 200 ish so I'm just gonna start low and do it slightly past the 180 I'm a hair girly of course I use the chase method I'm a hair girly of course I protect my hair from heat I'm a hair girly of course I have three straightening irons but mostly wear my hair curly anyways I'm using the chase method so get a fine tooth comb and make sure that you comb this section out from the bottom to the top so you get a tiny section at a time and that's the key to only doing one pass on your hair then you use the comb and you stick it at the top to keep everything detangled and then you go in with your straightening iron and I like to not pull too much because I don't want to pull my scalp and then get burnt and then you just slowly chase the comb that's why it's called the chase method and everything stays detangled and it should end up super straight but let's see <laughs> this is so straight that's crazy now I only have like 50 more of these to do. I'm gonna grab another section that's next to it, comb it, chase it. Now it's done. And evaluate. I don't think this looks as straight and as flat as the first one, so maybe I went slower on this section, but maybe I should also turn the heat up just a tiny bit, maybe to like 250. And I'm really staying low with that temperature because I just, I wanna find the lowest temperature that gives me the best result and then just never go over that. Okay, let's do this again. And I am clamping kind of hard because you do want some sort of tension and I'm not gonna pull on my hair, so clamping it hard will hopefully help. And there we go, beautiful. So, so far the key is to take tiny sections and make sure that you comb it out very well 
then use the chase method on about 250 degrees and just go really slowly while clamping super hard on the section to make it as flat as possible so you don't have to do another pass and it should turn out pretty straight. The back is completely done now, so it's time to move on to the top sections. There are two tips that I noticed work really well. Right now, I'm kind of pulling with this hand while flattening with the other hand so the hair is as straight as possible. And once I've gone through this full section, what I like to do is as soon as it's let down, I pull it straight down and comb through it. So when it's cooling, it will cool in a very straight and stretched out texture. And the reason I thought of this is because I've been seeing a lot of people do curls and blowouts and after they do the curl, they roll it back up and pin it until it cools. So I was like, if my hair is cooling right now, I might as well just hold it straight so it can cool even straighter. And that seems to be working pretty well. I'm not even gonna blow dry this top section. I'm just gonna go for it because it is dry so I'm not worried about steaming any of the products and it's already stretched out enough. So I think next time I would probably blow dry right before straightening it, but it was getting late in the day and I had had a long day and I was tired. So I figured I would do it today, but that would also solve the problem of having to double apply the heat protectant and I think it would just make it faster overall if I just do it in one go, but this is what you get today. So this is how my hair looks straight. I think it is so beautiful and it's just such a different vibe than curly hair. And the last thing I'm gonna do is add some hair oil. This is the oil that I make myself for hair growth and I'm just gonna put a little bit in my hand, rub it around and then gently comb it through my hair with just my hands and then smooth some on the top brush it through. That oil really helped with flyaways and making my hair look super smooth. And look at how these raccoon tails look. They are so cute. I am so glad that I did the experiment to try them on curly hair, but on straight hair, oh, it is giving. I knew it was going to give what it was supposed to have gave, but it did, and it looks amazing. I feel like everyone had very pin straight hair back in Disney Channel's Prime, and I used to straighten my hair for school, especially like middle school, early high school, and I never really got it such a beautiful straight. So I definitely impressed my young self with getting it this straight and this smooth. And as you can tell, I have layers and I have a tutorial on how I cut my hair, but I am so excited to use these layers and do a little bit of a blowout in my next video. I have this heated round brush, the one that's like everywhere on TikTok, and I got it so I can like blow out my hair and do like face framing layers and just all sorts of layers going on. So I'm so excited to see what these layers are gonna look like once I give myself a blowout. Let me know what you think about the raccoon tail straight versus curly versus braided. You can see I have videos for all of those on my pages. And don't forget to follow if you wanna see what this looks like blown out.